All right, guys, next thing we're going to add to our toolbox is a flashing light. We were able to see before how we could turn on the output to one of our lights, but maybe we wanted to flash it. So let's build that up now, guys. So what we'll do is we'll just go to configure. I'm going to make use of a, a three wire. So I got a stop and a start as my inputs. And let's see if I have my output here. There we go. So my output is uh, on output number six for my indicator light, just like on all the other previous videos. And at that point, we're going to hit apply and we're going to go over to program. We'll drop in a run and let's do a three wire. So we'll do a stop, a start, and we'll do a memory bit. And then what we'll do is we'll do a holding contact there. There we go. So this guy will be uh, percent input 0, 0.0. That's my stop. This is going to be percent input 0 0.1. Right on. Uh, this guy over here is going to be my memory bit. So that's going to be uh, percent percent m0. There we go. Oh, it looks like I've uh, been working on this from a previous video. So I don't want it to be, to be my timer reset. I just want this to be labeled as, come on, my internal relay. Beautiful. Okay. And I'm going to label this as M0. And when this guy turns on, then this will be true. And that will provide us with that holding contact. Okay. At that point, the yellow means that it hasn't been checked yet. So let's just double check that everything's cool. Nice. No errors so, so far. And that's what you might want to do is, as you build up a program, just do line by line and just double check the program as you go. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop in a rung here. And when that internal relay sets, then I'm going to have that turn on a timer. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this timer turn on another timer. Okay, so let's see. I want to have this guy as an on delay timer. So I change this to an on delay. Um, and I want my preset to be just one second now. So my time base is one second and my preset is one second. Excellent. I'm going to label this guy easy now. Come on. I've got fat thumbs today. Let's go. Okay, timer zero, timer one. And this guy is going to have a time base of one second as well. And my preset is going to be one second as well. Okay, so now that we've set those guys, we can go back to our program now. And I want my internal relay to turn that guy on. So we're going to label this percent %m0. Right on. That's going to turn on this timer. And when this timer is done, then we're going to turn on the next timer. So I need another rung here. And I'm going to say when that timer is done. So we've got percent %tm0 dot q. So when it's done and it's set to a 1, then turn on the next timer. So I'll drop this guy and you'll see that these are labeled the same. So I'm going to change this to the next sequential timer, tm1. Okay, I've already put in that name of timer 1 on a previous time. And if we open this guy up, it has that 1 second and the preset right so everything's cool there we saw that just a few seconds ago and at that point I'm going to delete this guy and I'm going to say when this timer is finished or has not finished timing then that's when I want the first guy to turn on so that way I'll be able to switch back and forth meaning that this timer will turn off this timer and reset the accumulated value so I'm going to say tm1.q so as long as that done bit has not set then turn on the timer as soon as this sets this will no longer be true and anything in series with this being not true will set the accumulated value back to zero and then it will start up fire on the qubit turn this on turn the next timer on and so it'll just flash back and forth between these two timers so we're going to create a flashing light based on two timers turning themselves on and off. Okay, we need one more rung here, guys. 
And we're going to say that as long as that internal relay has set, and we're going to keep track of this output right here. I've done it before. Or I've tried to look at the output of the second timer, but it works best when we look at the output of the first timer. So I'm going to do that. And I'm actually going to say that when that guy, let's see, has not set. So we'll try that out and see if it works. So let's see. Let's do percent %m0. So the internal relay has to set because we have to have that signal coming in. Otherwise, the light's going to turn on without a signal coming into the timer. And we're going to look at the first timer. So tm0 dot q. Right on. And at the back end of this guy, we're going to throw in our light. And I have my light physically wired to percent q0 dot 6. Excellent. Okay, let's double check everything. Nice. We got greens and no errors here whatsoever. Uh, if you're doing this at home and you don't have a PLC, you can go to the simulate and it should flash back and forth as you turn on this internal relay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to debug and I'm going to send this over to my PLC. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I'll pause here because this takes a little bit of time for it to come in. All right, guys, so let's put this guy into run mode now. And we're just waiting for this green light to turn on. There we go. Okay, let's get rid of this. And here we can see that the second timer has not timed out yet, right? So that's true. And so this is true. And all we're doing now is we're waiting for the internal relay to set and our indicator light should turn on and hopefully it's going to flash at a rate of one second. So I'm going to hit the, the start push button here guys. You'll see that this turns on. That sets the internal relay. This bit will set and provide that holding contact for the internal relay. We're looking that it's a one. These two will be true. This will start to increment up to one which will then set Easing out, which will then set this but this bit. We're looking at that bit that's going to turn on this the second timer here. And then as soon as this guy is true, then it will turn this off and the whole thing will start over and over. And so this output right here for TM0.Q should be flashing on and off. All right, let's hit the start button right here. There we go. So the internal relay has started. I'm going to let go of the push button. Ah, yes. So now we can see that our light is flashing on and off. And you, can, you can't see any values changing. Well, here you can see a value changing right there. That guy is changing right there. Going from a 1 to a 0. And at that point, that's what we're looking at in conjunction with that internal relay being on to flash our light. I've tried using the output of this guy, but you can see that this changes too fast and the light just stays solid. Okay, we'll hit the stop push button. As soon as we hit the stop push button, this should drop out and this guy should go down to zero. There we go. So that is back to an accumulated value of zero. And if we had that signal coming in again, then we get her to flash on and off. Right on. All right, guys, last thing I want to show you was how to change the, the time base here. So if we go in here and right now we're looking at one second each. Now watch what happens here if I change this to milliseconds and you don't want to do this for too long. As soon as I do that, then it's then going to change. So you can hardly make out, but it is still switching. If I change this to one millisecond and then move over, you can hear that's going to burn out those contacts. So now I'm going to go out to maybe 400 milliseconds here. There we go. So you can change your timing there by changing your time base, but it would be best to change your preset first and then change your time base. Then you don't, because those relay outputs are going to get smoked if you, uh, if you turn them on um, at one millisecond there. So by changing our preset, then we can change the timing 
of when that light is going to flash on and off. Okay, so I'm just change, reducing the that time base there. And you can see that as I reduce it, then it changes the output to our light. Okay, again, those contacts are probably gonna smoke. You can hear that turning on and off. So this, this isn't a transistor output. This is a relay output. And if we leave it like that, then it's probably gonna um, fail. So for this guy, I would just keep this at a second each. And this is enough to get somebody's attention here at one second a piece. Excellent. All right, guys, we'll go back to the program one more time so you can see it. So the flashing bit is just simply having the signal come in. I've used this from an internal relay, but this can be from anywhere. Then you have the fact that the second timer output is off. Then you throw in your timer. I've used this as an on delay timer. I've used it as a one second preset. When that output turns on, then we have that turn on the second timer, and then that changes the state of this contact. So this output right here is, or the state of this contact is changing fast. You just can't see it on the screen. And as long as we keep track of the output here on the first timer, then that value is gonna be turning on and off, and that is turning on and off our indicator light. If we wanna have it change at a different frequency, then we're going to change uh, either the sorry, the preset value or the time base. All right, guys. Thanks very much for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.